Hi, I'm Warren Yates at YatesBanjos.com and today I'd like to talk to you about finger picks. One of the greatest treasures to a banjo player is their picks. Uh, you get used to a set of picks and the way they play and you, you just can't hardly get used to anything else. Uh, one of the treasures are some of these old antique picks. Uh, and if you look at them, um, there was, there's different times, and I'm not going to give you dates because I don't know what the dates were, but somewhere in, in the area of 1970 and, and just before or so, um, they made National USA, which were, were good picks, but, you know, they, they were not as refined as the older ones that came before that. Uh, when you go back before that, you had the ones that they were a little more refined. All the edges were, were buffed around the edges. And you can see in the patent number, there's a number 8. And if you'll notice, it's a circle over a circle. Uh, those are referred to as round 8s. The ones that were before that, which goes way back in time, were referred to as oval 8s. Uh, we started making picks here at Yates Banjo, and we made direct replicas of that. It's uh, uh, they're made of nickel silver, and or some people call it German silver. It's the same formula, the same shape. Um, just to show you, uh, this is uh, one of the old antique picks. You can see that the, the bends are the same, the way they fit the fingers are the same, and the material's the same. They, they have the same type wear pattern. Uh, the wear pattern matches your playing style because they do wear. One of the things about uh, why a pick does what it does, a lot of times picks are made out of stainless steel, which is very hard. And uh, I'll show you an example here in just a minute on the, one of the instruments. Uh, you can hear uh, clicking sounds, chirping sounds, scrapes, all this kind of things. When you uh, create these noises that's made by picks, an ampl uh, a banjo can amplify all that. And it can start sounds going through the banjo that you're not wanting to go through the banjo. You want a clean sound. And if your picks are good, they're very slick and smooth. Um, and some picks on the market are very good picks. Um, they will reduce that extra pick noise that you get. And I'll, I'll demonstrate what some of that is. Okay, pick noise. Uh, some of the things that you get with pick noise is a lot of times when you have a pick that... You, you pull the string, you hear a scrape that sounds like a file going across. And what happens is, this sends a shock wave through your banjo in a very high frequency. And it's traveling along with the notes, and you want clean notes. Uh, if your pick is slick, that part of it is gone. But if you listen, hear how you hear this. What you're doing, you're hearing an actual note. For instance, if I hit a fret, okay, I fretted a note. Anytime that you hit a um, string, you're actually creating a fret. So you can't help do that. Uh, once in a while, you'll even hit a harmonic and it'll, it'll ring on out even more. So you can get all kinds of things. So the idea is try to reduce all this stuff. When your picks are softer, uh, they tend to absorb a little bit of that and they don't amplify. Uh, also, uh, the, the best way to pull tone is using uh, rounded spoon-shaped picks because it forces you to play down the center rather than off the edge. If you pick pulling back, you don't get a clean release and you want to be able to reach under and pull outward well that's the reason 
that you don't take your picks and bend them up to your fingernail because you can't reach under the strings to be able to pull tone out. I know that sounds odd, but it, it really is. It, when you're picking across the top, it's not the same thing as... You want to be able to reach under and pull upward as much as possible. So if the picks are straighter, you have the ability to reach under and do that. Picks will also, uh, as they polish themselves by playing, uh, you don't have uh, porous. I've studied a lot of picks to where you, you buff it real good to get rid of porous holes just simply to get rid of the first holes and then open up the next porous hole so it's like a sponge and uh, so there's there's no way to get around that so you end up like I say it sounds like a file going across your strings when it does but you want something that's smooth I hear something but if anything it's very slick very minimized movement so it gives me a chance to play what I want you to hear while not hearing the things that I don't want you to hear as well as I don't have to concentrate on them and on the uh, the bad tones and let it distract from my playing something I've seen so many times uh, when when someone's playing they start out playing the banjo uh, they try every pick in the world and you kind of have to but then what happens is you end up with a pile of picks that you don't like and and maybe you're lucky enough to find a set that um, worked for you so you used them um, you can end up having a lot of money tied up in picks um, but if you go by the things that have been tried and true through the years it's kind of hard to go wrong with that. Uh, there, there's new things coming along all the time. Maybe it's good, maybe it's not, but it takes money to find out. People kind of get uh, things mixed up a little bit, and, and the way I see it, people will buy a $50,000 car and a $10 pair of shoes. The car you only sit in for a few minutes a day, the shoes you wear all the time. Yeah, maybe it should be the other way around. Uh, with a banjo, it's it's not much different. We spend five thousand dollars for an instrument, and we want a set of two dollar picks to make it perform good. Now I said that picks were made of nickel silver, or also called German silver. Uh, it's not really. There's no silver in it. It's just a nickname given to a metal that tarnishes like silver and is about the same softness. It's really a mixture of uh, uh, like copper, nickel, zinc, that kind of thing. Uh, I'd have to look back at the formula to see exactly, but it's, it's a common thing to be had. Um, so that's what it really is. It The material is still expensive. It's not um, silver prices but it's still expensive but that's what we're talking about when they say nickel silver when we make these picks here we buy the sheet stock and we cut out the shapes on a, a CNC mill um, then we take them and we, we hand sand the edges in order to get it ready for buffing then we take and buff it uh, we buff the edges so that uh, every edge is round. You don't you don't have square edges. Uh, square edges don't sound good scraping across strings. Uh, round edges are more blunt than they do. So there's quite a bit of sanding, a lot of buffing, uh, and then forming. They we have to form them to make sure that they have the right spoon shape, that they have the tapered fit that a normal finger does and then be able to set them up to where when you put them on they're set for tone and comfort. Now the thing is finger picking is the same whether it's a banjo or guitar even dobro. The slickness
smooth, silky slick. Okay, I hope that helped. Um, maybe it did. Uh, if you want to try a set, go to yatesbanchos.com and look for finger picks. See you in the next video.